Uh, before I start, I'd like to acknowledge the indigenous people of this country on whose traditional lands we live on and pay our respect to the elders of the Nunua people, past and present. Uh, yes, more everyone. Uh, we are here in Australia, and uh, these two days, there have been many presentations about indigenous languages. But my people come from Northwest China. We call ourselves the Uyghur people. Uh, so uh, this is me with my parents in our traditional clothing. So I came to work with the Jane to research and write a dictionary on my endangered language initially. Uh, so which is Western Uyghur is a Turkic language, quite different from Jane's expertise in indig indigenous languages. But she's not limited by boundaries with her broad range cu curiosity and the knowledge and heartfelt support of not native language linguists. She has helped me support the revitalization of my language. So I extremely grateful to Jane Simpson. I know that I have been very lucky to have Jane as my PhD supervisor. She has been so kind, patient, and gentle. Uh, it has been a special time in my life, learning so much from her and her wisdom, something I will remember very well uh, for the rest of my life. So my initial work on revitalization was based on the community's needs for a practical dictionary that could be used in schools, in everyday life, and among those curious to learn their mother language. So our ultimate goal is an online dictionary that is uh, uh, crowdsourced from the community. Uh, in my journey to write a dictionary, there were um, a number of uh, steps. Some of the steps was a study of the language ecology of the region, design a practical orthography, and also uh, study bilingual education and the writer uh, curriculum help to write a curriculum for the schools, local schools, and also examination of a phonetics and the phonology, morphology and the syntax. So today I will mainly talk about um, the word formation processes of Western Yugo, and we'll also briefly demonstrate a prototype of our online dictionary. Uh, so Western Uyghur is a agglutinative language with word structures formed in a highly uh, synthetic way with the numerous derivational and the inflectional bound morphemes. So today I will mainly discuss some of the word formation processes, including derivational affixes, compounding and the reduplication. Uh, so like like other Turkic languages, the fundamental word formation mechanism in Western Yugo is the suffixation. So suffixes are often used to de derive new words, including change the, uh, changing the word class and uh, modifying words and the meanings from existing stems. Uh, so in Western Yugo, most suffixes exhibit allomorph and the choice of olomorph usually depends on the var harmony rules. So the following sections will illustrate the creation of word classes. Um, the first is the creation of verbs from nouns or adjectives. So last suffix and its olomorphs can form both transitive and intransitive verbs. This suffix is very productive and can be placed after a long word as well. Uh, so the R is also a productive verbal suffix, which mostly forms uh, intransitive verbs. It is commonly attached to color words, expressing the meaning to become certain color. But uh, exceptionally, it can be added after a noun stem to form a transitive verb and uh, may have an active meaning to act in some uh, way. 
such as suar, uh, means to give animal water um, with uh, like formed from the stem su, which is water. But this case is uh, not too common. Uh, so our suffix is often added after adjective to form a incoative verb to express to become. So which is especially common after a quantity adjective. So a derivational morpheme that attached to verb stem can convert a word into noun or a adjective. Here we listed about 10 nominizers and most of them are productive, except the last two. Uh, we can have a look at the nominizer t. We have the verb stem your which means to need. And with t, we can derive the noun yogurt, which means yogurt. Uh, so the zhang, a zhang suffix changes a verb to create a noun, meaning a person with a certain feature associated with the verb, such as the uh, which means to fear. And the uh, zhang means coward. A deverbal suffix ma makes a noun, which often denotes a tool or a noun phrase, which often denotes uh, occupation. We can have a look at um, on the next slide. So often a phrase consists of a noun followed by a verb and the plural form can be attached after the ma suffix to denote occupation. The expressions created this way are colloquial. So if we look at the, this construction in an example sentence, together means the barbers. Uh, in the second sentence, we can see the, the verbal suffix ma make, makes a noun that denotes a tool. The formation can be quite simpler compared to the first example, which uh, when we denote the occupation. Uh, the ma suffix can also be placed after long words to express someone's related work. In both case, uh, cases, la is a verbalizer used to create verbs from a long words. Uh, even though these long words are already verbs in the original language, so we can still put la after uh, verb long words. Uh, so now let's look at the creation of uh, nouns from adjectives or another noun. So the uh, the adjectival suffix ma can be added after adjective stem to create a noun expressing a certain feature associated with that adjective. And the zhi suffix changes a, a noun, sometimes even an adjective but it's not uh, as uh, productive uh, if it's uh, uh, follow after adjective. So to create another noun, meaning a person with a practice or occupation associated with, the, with that stem. So, okay. Uh, so now the last one is the creation of adjectives from nouns. So the suffix, with its allomorphs can be added after certain noun stems to form adjectives that indicate a, a state related to that uh, noun stem, uh, such as um, the adjective bozdo, tall, uh, as in person's height, derives from the noun boz, means body. So now we're going to talk about compounding, uh, which is a productive word formation procedure in Western Yugu. So syntactically, there are nominal compounds and verbal compound, compounds. Semantically, compounds can be classified as uh, endocentric, exocentric, and uh, calculative compounds. But I'm not going to talk about the semantic classification today for compounds. Uh, so if we look at and see, nominal compounds first, 
nominal compounds can be derived from uh, Western Uyghur words. So baka kayak, which means algae, which derived from um, baka means a frog, and kayak means skin from the surface of a boiled milk. And we also uh, can originate from uh, cups, uh, such as kolakitas uh, means a tooth with a cavity, uh, which derived from kolakhe, uh, which means a worm, and this means a tooth, actually, which is a calc from a Chinese. Chong ya, chong means a worm, ya means a tooth, which literally also means a worm tooth. So uh, they also like uh, compare with the Turkish and some other Turkic languages. Uh, Western Uyghur. 10 minutes remaining. Thank you. Compounds generally do not require a compound marker. Uh, if we look at uh, uh, Sulonha, which means a water bottle. We don't need any compound mark marker. However, in Turkish, uh, we need co compound marker su suffix after the compounder, a uh, compounding, sorry. And uh, if we look at uh, the verb compound, the most comp uh, common type of verb for compound is uh, Noun plus a verb, such as uh, or, or means a, and r means to take, to get. So together means to breathe. And there are some examples of verb plus verb compound, where the first uh, uh, verb usually is a primary verb denoting motion, and the second verb indicating direction, whether to or away from the speaker such as alakir means to take something towards the speaker. Alakbar means to take or pass something to someone towards the speaker or a third person. Alakbar, which means to take something away, away from the speaker. Okay, now let's look at the reduplication. So uh, reduplication, especially partial Reduplication is a productive process in Western Yugo. They are formed by partially reduplicate, uh, reduplicating the stem, and the meaning of the stem is often changed. Uh, there are constraints um, on what the stem can be, including a strong preference for disyllabic or monosyllabic stems. So if we look at the nominal uh, reduplication, if the stem is a noun, then often the partial reduplication component follows the suffix, follows the stem noun, which more like a suffix. Uh, so reduplication only occurs with as the last syllable or last consonant with a change of a first consonant to M and following the vowel, uh, if we, we look at uh, this example, first one, gus means ox. So if we uh, say gusmus means ox-like things that ox-like things and probably include uh, oxen. So the meaning of the stem often changes to non-stem-like things and uh, probably uh, includes that now. So sometimes we call this as expressive reduplication. So if the stem is adjective, then often the partial reduplication component precedes a dialectic uh, stem. Uh, then in that case, more like a prefix, we have a look at the um, disyllabic, sorry, disyllabic stem first. And often reduplication only occurs as a with the first syllable with a change of second consonant to P and removing the second syllable. Uh, we can have a look at um, Kala, which means black. So Kap Kala, so means pitch black. So actually uh, this kind of a, a partial duplication is the only regular use of a prefix 
prefixation in Western Yugu and uh, semantically its function is to intensify the meaning of adjectives. Uh, however, if the adjective stem is monosyllabic, it seems that the entire stem is a reduplicate and the P is uh, added to the beginning of the stem, such as the ak means white, if we say ak akbak means uh, very white. Uh, now let's look at the um, another type of uh, video vacation uh, re resembles uh, idiophones in form and meaning. Idiophones are commonly used in Western Yugu with both anamotopic words and mimetic words. Uh, the reduplication creates new words similar to the base, but often with uh, different meanings, especially for mimetic words. Uh, mimetics and the onomatopic words behave alike with respect to word formation and the phonological features. So, the, uh, so if we look at um, some example, maybe telek, telek means a hole. So telek telek means uh, can describe something cred, uh, created or with holes on an uh, object. Five minutes remaining. Thank you and also can describe someone's sight is not very good. Uh, so there are some vowel or consonant alternation appearing in the formation of idiophones, which are relatively regular, especially for vowel alternation, if you look at these examples. Uh, so let's have a quick look at the uh, functions of idiophones. So most of idiophones function as uh, adverbials, uh, usually with a calcular verb. Uh, so we can also look at second example to listen. So tuber tuber here means uh, all in a fluster, uh, but uh, occasionally a few Mimetic can function as nouns and have the accusative case marker, such as the summon summon means clutter. Okay, now finally, uh, let's have a look at the, I'd like to just have a like brief demo of the dictionary website. So after completing my PhD at ANU, I have been continuously working on an online dictionary with a team that will be fit for the community's use. Uh, so, so now I'm going to show you some of the features of the, this dictionary. Sorry. Uh, so, this dictionary, like uh, currently we are working on Western Uyghur dictionary, but hopefully uh, later we'll also add, add the Eastern Uyghur words as well. So if we click Western Uyghur dictionary, and uh, we have a search um, and uh, search bar, we can search uh, as in Uyghur, Western Uyghur or Chinese or English. So if we search in Western Uyghur, so we can see all the words uh, contained as a uh, su or water. Uh, I mean, basically su uh, in as in the entries or example sentences. And the same for English, we can search water. Okay, so this is the, uh, we are like, this is like for as an English version, we all, we will also have a Chinese version, but uh, not implemented yet. So, but however, we have a trilingual version at the moment. Can I have a quick look as well? So this is a trilingual version. So we will have um, um, sound files for both entries and uh, example sentences, as well as the uh, pictures, images. Okay, we can also, look at uh, some other examples such as why and we have uh, um, more entries here and we also put the suffixes 
can see all the suffixes and also uh, include the some of the case markers. Okay, uh, so now if we we also going to put the semantic domains, and uh, if we search uh, another word, we can have a look at edit page, maybe squeeze, maybe just this one. So from the squeeze, uh, we, if we click this head word, we can edit the entry. So we have a head word pronunciation variant, and also we can put the pronunciations. So pronunciation, we can just record straight away. I can try now. So And uh, we can also upload a sound file. Just uh, for example, I mean, just uh, pretend this is the sub. Okay, we can also download this sound file. So, and then we can, so the whole idea is for now, we, I'm, I'm an only person like editing the entries, but uh, after the website like finish, then the whole idea is like community members can contribute entries. So they can put their uh, name and also age and also hometown where they came from. And also if it, they want to can put a field notes as well uh, in both Chinese, uh, usually I probably work on the English side. And uh, if we look at, we can add more recordings and uh, also uh, we can look at the sense, include part of the speech, grammatical information, and uh, glosses in both Chinese and English, definition in both Chinese and English. And we also would like to uh, have a monolingual Uyghur definition. And if for plants and animals can put scientific name, and we can also add image, but it's not implemented yet. And for example, sentence, we can do the same thing like here. And we can add more examples. And we can also put uh, synonyms, synonyms such as I can put an um, example like uh, bus. We can add uh, synonyms or antonyms or related words. Maybe we can put another. Uh, Zoom. And then we can also put cultural comments and the bibliography sources. And uh, also uh, etymo uh, etymology and also bibliography source for whole entry. This is uh, and the sense. So this one's uh, and whole entry and the cross, cross reference and they can submit. Okay. And for, if we need to add more sense, so we can just add from here. So we can see we have a sense two, sense three, and we can add new sense as well. Uh, so, so this is the main function for the edit page. So if we go to... Time to uh, wrap up. Thank you, almost finished. So, uh, here's our, I uh, also would like to uh, acknowledge Kodo, like uh, uh, last year we had uh, some grants to start the prototype of this uh, website project. And now we have a small team, uh, basically everyone's a volunteer working on this uh, project. So we are still like keep, keep uh, working on this uh, website. So if anyone, I just want to say, if anyone would like to use this for ideas, I welcome you to approach me. We are happy to share our work with everyone. And if you have any ideas for us, you also uh, would be most welcome to share them with us. And if you would like to work with us, then please contact me and together perhaps we could save an endangered language 
and shares a different with other communities too. And lastly, I'll just go back to my slides again. Uh, oops. Uh, I'd like to thank Jane again for broadening my vision seen beyond my own endangered language to other global uh, endangered language in the world, including Australian indigenous languages. To save an endangered language is, a tr I think, is a truly a shared endeavor. So I truly treasure Chain's great assistance, devotion, and the time to support me and my community. I have a passion for my language, but Jane has fueled that and taught me it's vital to have a more positive language attitude in the community. And I'd like to say, uh, Jane is inspirational and always will be. Thank you. Jade.